I'm here with Andy from ASE Customs here at Coventry Motor Fest. So, what is this? Cool, well it actually started as a sort of an American style cruiser, a Yamaha Virago 920. Um, I kind of really like the, the feature of the big air-cooled V engine and the simple drive line. So that's kind of where my starting point was. And then I kind of evolved it with the front end. That's off a 2008 Yamaha R1. So kind of overkill on the brakes and the suspension, but it was really cool style to have. Um, so setting up the bike and the stance of the bike. And then from that point, it was a case of choosing what kind of tank I wanted to stick on it. So it's actually off a, an XJ600. Um, sits at quite a different angle on that on that original bike, but I like the way the curves were. So the way I sat it on this bike, kind of the the lower arch above the, the V of the engine kind of sat nicely. And, that, and then that set up the line then to, uh, to set the rear tail section. So that's all completely bespoke, fabricated a steel uh, subframe. And then uh, the tail unit, was many, many, many hours sculpting that to sort of make it look like it was actually always meant to be and match the features of the tank. Obviously custom seat, leather seat, um, tailored myself. And uh, the exhaust then, that's from uh, pre-bent sections of uh, stainless steel, which I've uh, cut and welded together and then given it all brush finish so it kind of all looks like it's seamless and, and into one. I must say that the effect is fantastic, especially with this kind of dark blue and bronze paint on it. Wonderful job. So we're back here at the Coventry Motor Fest, this time with Zef, with three totally unique vehicles. Let's start with this quad bike in front of us. What is it and why is it? This is our bespoke Mad Max quad. This has held the all-out quad record on the Guernsey Hill Climb, which is part of the British National Hill Climb course. It's got a 600cc Rotax two-stroke in it from the snowmobile, race snowmobile in the US. It runs a CVT box as well, so no conventional gearbox. Massive acceleration off the line. As fast as you can press the throttle, it's as fast as it accelerates. Very nice. I did see you going around yesterday and earlier today. What's it like to ride? Very, very aggressive and powerful. It's going to try and spit you off on each corner. It's going to accelerate like a catapult from every sort of bend and start line. It was built for hill climbing and that's what it excels at. I absolutely love this thing. Four wheels, but I'm a biker myself. Two wheels are always better. So let's move on to this, which looks somewhat conventional in comparison. This is the only road legal Kawasaki H2R. Yep. Not H2, it's the R version. That's the 300 horsepower race version. What we did was, we took an H2 and an H2R, stripped them all down, built them together so we can make it fully road legal. You must feel like one of the luckiest people on this planet to have that. Well, it's one of these ideas where you think about it in the pub, and then when you actually do it, you realise it's a bit more painful than you first thought, because what people don't realise is the H2R doesn't have the radiator fans, doesn't have the lighting loom, it's not road legal exhaust, nothing. So there was quite a lot of modifications to be done. So we're here with the last of the three machines, and this is somehow even more extreme than the last two. This is the Mad Max Jet Turbine Street Fighter bike. This has the record of the fastest turbine bike in the world at 234 miles an hour. The fastest Street Fighter bike. For those who don't know what that means, that means upright bars, no fairing. And the fastest naked bike, meaning no fairing in Britain as well. The whole the Guinness Book of Records, 225 miles an hour, no ferry upright bars. And yeah, it's a quite extreme beast. Okay, so you're saying over 200 miles an hour, no fairings. What's it like to ride at that speed with no wind deflection? It took me three years in the gym to build up the strength of my neck, muscles and shoulders. The way I describe it is, it's like an 80 kilogram person standing on your head. Right? Okay, That's the force. Then. And what I do to stop my neck from snapping and breaking, I actually have the, uh, a sort of Kevlar strap from the bottom of the helmet 
to a climbing brace and I strap the two together so at those speeds it doesn't actually snap the head clean off. Wow. Yeah. You are far yeah. braver than me to get on something like that. And just looking over this bike, there's a load of really interesting details. I've just noticed you've got what looks like it could be an indicator at the front. Then these tanks on the side. Can you tell us a bit more about those? Well, what makes it unique is that it's a turbine bike. That means not a turbo. It's got the shaft turbine from the helicopter, the Augusta 109 helicopter. Rolls-Royce turbine in here. Out of the factory, it's 420 horsepower. But because we run a water methyl injection system, we can take it to 560 horsepower at the rear wheel. That's nearly 700 horsepower at the engine. It's got a thousand pounds foot of torque at the rear wheel. That's far in excess of a Porsche 911 turbo. It's got one gear, zero to 250 miles an hour, and it makes that torque at zero RPM. Yeah, I think I would describe that torque and power as sufficient in all circumstances. Yeah, it's, it's like nothing you've ever ridden before. When I did the sprint on Saturday here, I did the whole thing with the brakes on. It idles at 80 miles down the motorway. It makes 180 horsepower idling. <laughs> so going around here requires a lot of focus because it's just not designed for these slow kind of tracks with lots of chicanes and stops in them. So is this thing road legal? And of course it's road legal because one of the things that we love doing at Mad Max Racing is to make sure that everything you see from the quad to the H2R, you can ride them on the road. You can go from the Premier Inn, do your world record and celebrate in the pub later. I absolutely love all three of these. This is gorgeous, but then the quad and obviously the clean, cleanness of the H2R. Here at Coventry Motor Best once again, this time I'm stood with this rather lovely Bentley Continental with Luke. Please, can you tell me a little bit about it? Uh, so the car itself is a uh, Generation 2 Bentley Continental GT3. Uh, you normally see these partaking in things like um, GT Cup and British GT. We use it for a slightly different purpose, so we actually run it in time attack. So we are against the clock, we're not racing door to door. Uh, it's a seriously, seriously capable car, a lot of fun to drive. Why did we do it? We needed a solution in a relatively short space of time that would be eligible for the competition series that we enter. Can you tell us a little bit more about Time Attack? Uh, so Time Attack was conceptualised really to, I suppose as a form of motorsport, it's very relatable for people. Um, cars are all based, oh, sorry, all based on road cars. Um, a lot of them started out as road cars, so having a factory built car is quite unusual for Time Attack. The theory behind it really is it's all about that one perfect lap. Um, so you are on the absolute edge when you're on your, on your hot lap um, and you are really you know, for the best possible time in the, in the circumstances. So it's, uh, it's really, really thrilling to not just take part in, but we hope for the, um, for the spectators as well. So what sort of tracks do you run? Thank you.